All right, it's live. All right, can you, uh, are you able to edit it after the fact? Uh, yes, I think so. I never tried that, but I'm pretty sure I can, yeah. I can, I can, I can pause, but I can pause it too. At yeah, any stop, time. just stop for one sec. Let me get this thing totally blanked out. Whenever you're ready. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. So Tyler, just as I mentioned to you, to you this uh, this product profile template is really <clears throat> designed to help us make a decision on which products we should buy. Which ones we shouldn't, which ones we should hold off on, and, and how much. So, one of my concerns, as I'm sure you've noticed, is um, we, we can't rely 100% on the data that comes out of Price Checker 2. Even if we could, it's not really formatted in a way that, that says, yes, we should make a, you know, we should make a buying decision based off of that. So, I, I created this template. So basically, the way that it works is you can use it with or without Price Checker 2 data. It's, it's a little easier with it, but um, it'll work just fine without it. So normally, the first thing you would do is go into price, your output from Price Checker 2, and then go down here. Actually, you're basically going to highlight the row that you want all the way across, and then just copy that. And then go down to the first cell and hit paste special text only. And then you'll notice that that populates a lot of this data up here. I'm sure this, this needs to be formatted. So we've got uh, the BYS, uh, you know, Safari hat. So um, of course I'm gonna then put my name in, and then the last review date. In this case, it would be today's date. So five five one seven. And then uh, uh, we we would start basically filling in information. So uh, the first thing you want to do is to actually do a search in uh, Amazon, a general search for this particular hat. All right, so let me – and the reason we want to do this is we want to make absolutely certain there's not a multiple ASINs, right? Because it, it's uh, price checker two is telling me there's not multiple ASINs, but I've seen instances where it was wrong. All right, so we we did the search. There's only one ASIN. Clearly, it's, it's this one. Okay. Uh, now from here, uh, if you have access to ASIN Inspector, you can run it to pull out some of the information that's here. Such as the manufacturer, UPC, ASIN, and whatnot. Uh, well, the ASIN is the same. So, um, <clears throat> and some of the some of the information on here, I'll be honest, isn't isn't necessarily critical. Um, manufacturer is uh, Backyard Safari. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is every cell that has an input um, has a uh, these little red tabs. It's a note basically to tell you what to do with that particular cell. Yeah, that's great. That's good. Yeah, every single one of them. So if it doesn't have a red note on it, that means it's not an input cell. Just leave it alone. <laughs> uh, also, anything that needs to be completed is, is light blue. You'll notice when it's completed, it changes colors to, to clear, right? So um, you can just put toys, or the proper one is uh, toys and games. Um, in this case, the minimum quantity order, you'll see on the note here, 
if the manufacturer told us that there was one, put that. In this case, um, you can either put none or uh, unknown. Or just leave it blank for now. Multiple ASINs. Price Checker 2 tells us no. <clears throat> we have confirmed that is in fact a no. The item number. Uh, price Checker 2 <coughs> says this. And ASIN Inspector confirms it. So it is in fact the, the same number. Uh, the UPC, now here's, a, here's an interesting one. So the UPC in this case is different. So what that tells us is a new UPC has been issued. Now since price trigger 2 is driven off of UPC, these are the types of scenarios where it's really important to make sure that you know, we, we do the, we basically take this through its completion. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the ASIN, you know, we can pull directly off of the, the listing. Now, how does having two separate UPCs impact us? Uh, it doesn't impact us in terms of ordering, but it, sometimes there are multiple listings with different UPCs. Right. That that's where it's important. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the wholesale price per unit. Uh, price sticker 2 said it was 6 based on the data that we inputted and for the sake of this exercise we're going to confirm it was in fact 6. Uh, case size, in this case they're shipped individually. Um, does Amazon uh, currently sell it? So that basically you're just looking to see if Amazon has the buy box right now. Um, whoops. Uh, Actually, no one has the buy box right now, so the answer to that is no. And then we would look at percent Amazon sold the last three months. So you can either go ahead and copy this graph out of Keep It Now, um, or uh, or you can just use it as a reference on here. I mean, you're going to need to do it anyways. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and copy it because it belongs down at the bottom of this. So let me get a copy of it. How do you do that? Just you're just gonna screenshot it. Yep. Yep. Just just take a snippet. <clears throat> oh, and uh, let me make a point. So make sure that Amazon's clicked, new is clicked, used. You can unclick. The rank is on, and then the buy box is on. Those are the ones. So orange, purple, green, pink. Mm -hmm. Uh, now you want three months. What's the range that you want of time? Three, three months. Three months is fine. Okay. Three, yeah, three months. So I'm gonna snip this, a capture, and then I'm just gonna paste it down here in the spreadsheet. And if you need to move the, the cell heights around and whatnot to, to adjust for it, that, that's fine. Um, I'm going to do that just so we can get a little bit more of it. And what that does is gives us both the price history, the rank history, and also tells us how much Amazon has been selling it. All right. So based on that graph, we can now look and say, all right, so... Um, what percentage of last three months has Amazon sold this product? That's what this means in the, the notes here. So you have to look at the graph uh, and <clears throat> basically just ballpark it you know, from there. Um, you know, they sold it basically from, uh, from the beginning of the three months up through uh, the end of March and then sporadically in April and May. So, you know, if I had to guess, I'd say 60% of the time. So just select 60%. Uh, if we look at uh, the number of FBA sellers, go back here. So you see all buying options. The, 
there are. So you got to click click prime as well. Yeah. And new. Click prime. Yeah. So that shows you that there are uh, there are three FBA sellers. All right. Now the number of uh, FBA sellers that are within uh, five percent of the current buy box right now. There's only one. But it's worth noting that buy box is is quite low. Right? It's eleven sixty one. So we're just gonna put one. Uh, the average uh, BSR, so bestseller rank um, for the past month. So again, you go back to your graph. Uh, you look at the last uh, month. Which is you know kind of in this range, and you just again just just ballpark it. So I'd say you know looking at this probably um, say twenty five thousand. Doesn't have to be exact, which is pretty close to the current one. And now you've got to say all right. So how much is that estimated units worth? So the way to do that is just click on this link. It'll take you to the jungle sales estimator. Click on the um, the category. In this case, it's toys and games, and then just punch in the rank, twenty-five thousand. All right, and it's going to tell you that uh, that that equates to, and it's based on one hundred and five units. Just punch in one hundred and five. Okay, and then uh, the product container type and FBA shipping requirements. So you have to go back and look at the listing and you won't always necessarily know this. Um, in some cases it'll be quite obvious. You know, like a box of Kleenex uh, would be, you know, sealed box, right? So since this is a, uh, since this is a loose item, we just don't know. You know, we don't know how it comes from the manufacturer. So we're going to have to leave uh, leave it blank uh, in both of these cases. Okay, so we'd have to circle back on this later, but that's all right for now. Okay, then we would go and say, all right, what is the average retail cost of this item? So retail is anything non. Um, this is really non Amazon. So all you want to do is go basically uh, searching Google for the item. It shopping. Find the most popular one, which in this case is here, and then hit compare prices from the source. Right now, any oddballs you can basically throw out, um, but you want to pick the three that are are the most prevalent uh, sellers. Right, and so here we'll take these top three. Let's see. Um, so I would eliminate anything that is like a Zulily or uh, yeah, the Christian books, New Eggs. These are not not relevant to this. So sixteen dollars, Toys R Us, sixteen dollars, uh, eBay. So we're gonna say sixteen bucks. That seems to be kind of the going going rate. Not, yeah. and that does not include shipping or anything like that. And you're basically just taking the the most well-known brand names <clears throat> and averaging, you know, best average right. of the price. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you don't want to use any like eBay, anything like that, because those prices fluctuate a lot. Um, you know, Zulily is a is a is a P2P marketplace, so it doesn't it's not relevant. Christianbook.com, I can't imagine that it's something that would regularly sell. So. You know, just try to eyeball it. They, I, I'll be honest. Um, you know, you see like a Toys R Us. I mean, that right there, because they're so large. I, you know, I see that and I'm like, all right, then I'm going to peg it there. As long as it's in line maybe with one other place. In this case, JCPenney, Cross Alert. All right. Um, and then we've got, uh, we've got the buy box price. So what is the, what is the current buy box? Well, in this case, there is no buy box. Which is very interesting. So um, we put uh, we put zero. Let's see what that does to my numbers. <laughs> um, then we want to look at the the current average uh, three month average for the buy box. 
right? So again, you go back to your graph and, you know, take out these high spots. And really what you're looking at is, all right, based on here, where, what is the average that it's been selling for, you know, by, by whatever seller? And based off of this, here's 1075, it's probably about 11 bucks, right? On average, it's been high lately, but that's clearly a spike. So we're just gonna say 11 bucks. Went to 11. So a lot of this is clearly common sense just based on analyzing the data that's provided with the tools that we're using on a regular basis like Keepa, which is the box that you're looking at there with the graph. Um, exactly right. And it's essentially just analyzing that data and making yep. a, a common sense decision on it. Correct. That, that's exactly right. So uh, let's see. And then, you know, to get, uh, to get the Amazon fees, you can use, um, there's, you know, lots of tools that are available. Uh, we will use, in this case, uh, AMZ Scout, FBA fees, you know, 474. All right. Um, inbound shipping costs. So in many cases, you're not going to know this. I think um, I've got to come up with a rate per pound. I did it for the outbound. Um, let's see. The shipping weight here is, you know, 0.15. My, my guess is the inbound shipping cost is probably going to be around uh, 30 cents a pound-ish. So, you know, we'll, we'll just be conservative, but uh, it's probably not going to be any more than, I don't know, 10 cents. Um, outbound shipping costs, again, I've got notes here, 35 cents a pound. You know, again, 10 cents is probably fine. Um, prep cost, we don't know what those are yet, um, but I'm going to assume that they have to be polybagged uh, for the purpose of this exercise, and you see on the note, they have to be polybagged, put 50 cents, because there's labor involved with that. All right, um, and then, then we're done, basically, with, with the, the data entry part. So, uh, so, so uh, May and Sharon, if you're filling this out, I mean, theoretically, I mean, at the early stages, you can stop here. But at some point, we're going to want you to make a, a recommendation. Now, this one's pretty obvious, right? Um, because if you if you look at, uh, you know, there's there's not multiple ASINs, so that's good, right? Because all the things that are read are part of the decision buying decision process. But multiple ASINs is not a critical decision. The percentage that they've sold in uh, Amazon sold in the last three months, 60%, that's high. I mean, it's not super high, but that would give make me nervous, right? Um, the net profit margin, negative 4%. Net ROI, negative 7.3%. Uh, so automatically disqualifies them you know, immediately, okay? So you would say no, and then... Uh, you would just put in the notes, um, profit margin, uh, and RI too low. So RI too low. And then you're done. If I can spell low right. Oh, the one other step I forgot to put is. Um, I was just going to ask top, you about that. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, wondering, I was like. Top, <laughs> you want to replace this underline with um, a truncated version uh, of, the, uh, of the title. In this case, the, the title already is truncated. So we'll just put uh, BYS Safari Hat. And by truncated, you just mean an abbreviated version? That'll fit there, as opposed to some yeah, of the long, yeah. long listings that we're going to come across. Right. You yeah. Get, you know, you get these listings with these hellaciously long um, titles, and so you would probably just put uh, the brand and then whatever it is, right? So Samsung, you know, Bluetooth, 
you know, speaker. Right. You know, so, something along those lines. And then that's it. Now, when this is, um, eventually I'll have this set up in Google Sheets. So you'll just rename this tab, you know, Google Sheets, uh, and then just make sure it's saved in the appropriate uh, folder, and then you, you know, you move on. So here's an example of another one that I <clears throat> that I did. And okay, so Slinky three pack. And uh, so I went through the exact same process. You can see the the graph down here looks a, a little bit different, right? But 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 same exact principle. Now one thing you'll note about this graph. Is you know this this popped up on our list is like hey you, should, you know the, the numbers looked fantastic, um, and then I really dug in down into it and I noticed two critical problems. Number one, Amazon has consistently been selling this product and they've only just within the past month, or not even month, like two and a half weeks, have not had it in stock for whatever reason. And if I went back and looked at a year, they've had it in stock almost the entire time. So for whatever reason they ran out, all right. But based off that history, you know, we, we can safely assume that they're going to get it back in stock at some point, you know, down the road. Um, the other thing that jumped out, you know, with this one was the uh, the buy box that uh, Price Checker Two came up with was twelve dollars and fifty one cents. Now, when I went and looked at the listing. It's actually uh, right now it's 1386, but when I did this this morning it was 1361, which sounds great. Wow, okay, that's above the buy box, wonderful. But then again, you go down and you look at the graph, and you say, okay, what has been the price traditionally? And it's about ten dollars and fifty cents. Ten forty-nine uh, is the is the historical price for that. And so when you punch in ten forty-nine here, the numbers fundamentally change, right? I mean, if, if you had in, uh, let's even use their original ones, 1251. That's a big difference. That means, yeah, for every, uh, you know, the margins are 23.3%, not amazing, not not bad, um, not good for, for private label, but certainly for wholesale. But for every, um, for uh, $1,343 worth of capital, we would earn $620 in profit, which isn't bad, right? I'd probably do that. But of course, that's not what the buy box is. It's actually $1,049. Now, we might get that for a little bit, um, but who knows? By the time we get, uh, you know, by the time that we actually get the product here and get it into Amazon, this may be corrected. Now, that being said, and this, these are really, you know, this is really for Tyler and I, we could say, well, you know, based on the history, yeah, let's just do a small test order and see what happens, right? And we buy, you know, 100 units, you know, at, uh, at, at uh, whatever the price ends up being, if, we, if we're approved, you know, I think I put it here 250, and it's 270 bucks, you know, why not? It's not a big risk. Um, but certainly, this is not a product that we would want to invest in, in the long term. So that uh, I think I pretty well covered it. Oh, the one, I think the one other thing I, I <clears throat> forgot to mention is for the for the URL here. Um, all you need to do to complete the URL so that it goes directly to the product is add the ASIN at the very end of the URL. So after the Amazon.com backslash DP backslash then put the ASIN in there. And that will make sure that it goes directly to, uh, uh, to that product page every time. Oh, that's great. It's a, it's a genius tool for sure, so that's good. Especially when oh, products, say, when products get to this point. Things being recorded. That's right. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we turn it off, I'll tell you what I really think. No, I mean, it's great. It's good. It's a... Uh, it's good to go manual once once a product has made it all through the, the you know all through the filters that we've put in place. It's good to go manual in terms of making a hundred percent sure that this is something that uh, you know we can reasonably predict. 
uh, will be successful. So, and that's something we've talked about, Sharon May and I, quite a bit. So, yeah, I mean, this is the uh, this is the final check. Yep. If this looks this looks good. Then we'll know with a with a high certainty yeah. that we're we're in good shape. Yep. Right? I mean, it doesn't leave a lot to chance. Right. Uh, so especially once you once you factor in the uh, the history here. All right. You want to stop yep. the 